was one of your most difficult preaching moments, challenging preaching moments. The most difficult preaching moment, challenging, was um, I told you that I was a pastor and a group filed a lawsuit mm -hmm. against me and the church, me and the church leadership. And so it was done on a Monday afternoon, so I get a phone call and there's a lawsuit down here with your name on it, with my name on it. And so we got down there and got it and it had my name and, and there were members of the church that were suing us. So um, it was devastating. I mean, it was absolutely devastating. Mm -hmm. And so I'm the preacher for Sunday morning. And what do I preach? I said, well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to call Dr. Gina Marcia Stewart and let her come over here and preach, you know, because I can't, I can't. I mean, I was, I was out of it. You know, you're in shock, first of all. Mm -hmm. And then when you come out of shock, mm -hmm. you go to depression. I mean, like, we're supposed to be Christians. Mm -hmm. And then it was public, which means people got copies of it and spread it. The barbershops, the newspapers, the television stations, it was everywhere. I got calls from people across the country that I ain't heard from and I don't know when. Wow. Me, you all right? Yeah. We heard about it, right? So I said, well, I can't duck out and bring in a guest. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to preach, ye whitewashed tombs, ye workers of iniquity. You know, you know, we preach those sermons, and then when they right. say, you talking about us, I said, no, right. that, no we, I ain't talking about y'all. Right. Jesus, Jesus said that. Jesus said that. It's in red it, letters. It, right, in the text, right? <laughs> right. And so somewhere about Thursday of, and, or Friday, um, I can't claim credit for it. I think it, it really was God. The word came um, to me, preach what you most deeply believe about the character of God. Mm -hmm. So I tell preachers, the more trouble you're in, preach the character. What is it that you preach the character of God? What is it? So I believe that God is a God of mercy. So when you're in a public scandal like that, you know, it has the feel of um, being in school. And, you know, it's like there's going to be a fight at three. It's going down at three. <laughs> right. Right. So everybody hangs mm -hmm. around the playground waiting mm -hmm. for it to go down. People who normally go home, don't right. go home. They, they hang around. They hang around. So this, yeah. is, this is how it was in the church. I mean, it's just like, oh, okay, everybody was there. They want to see what I'm going to say, what I'm going to do. Carolyn Knight flew down to be with me. Martha Simmons flew. And um, I gathered our little family together, my wife, my son, and my daughter. And I said, um, no matter what happens, we're going to hold our head up. Mm -hmm. The people don't have a right to our private pain. Mm -hmm. They don't have that right. Whatever happens, you know. I said, um, we're going to get through it. I'm gonna... So I preached that morning, our God is so full of compassion. We mm -hmm. serve a merciful God. I mm -hmm. preach what I believe about the character of God. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a good sermon. I wish that um, the structure would have been better. I wish that my clothes would have been tighter. You know, it was a hard clothes, a hard clothes, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but it's an example of what I was saying is that sometimes you, you, you just, you stand there right. on the word of God. And it says in season and mm -hmm. out of season. And I wish it would have been better. I wish I could have done better, but I couldn't. But by virtue of the fact that I stood there and offered the very best, I, I, I thought God was pleased. And, uh, and I went home and laid down somewhere and took refuge in my family. And so I think um, that was probably the most difficult um, preaching moment and I've seen um, a lot of preachers, not just me. I mm -hmm. saw a preacher, I was doing revival for a preacher in St. Louis and a daughter had an aneurysm and died last night. I was waiting for him to pick me up at the hotel. Never came, mm -hmm. never came. He had rushed her out of the house. Next week, um, he preached a funeral. And uh, she was sitting there in the casket. So when he got up and went to that, that pulpit, I lost it. 
audacity in the face of death mm -hmm. to still proclaim. Yeah. So I know that I'm not doing I know there are preachers that do it a lot, but you got to find it somewhere. And there, there are the appropriate times when you shouldn't preach, you know. Mm -hmm. If, if uh, me and my wife, for example, were splitting up, it might not be a good time to preach. Mm -hmm. or, you know, that could be things. But I had to preach that Sunday. Right. As the pastor, I had mm -hmm. to, you know, I had to stand. You know what it reminds me of? That wonderful text where um, Absalom has died. David is grieving. And uh, I think one of the generals comes to him and say, um, you're gonna grieve more for your son who betrayed you than you are for all these soldiers that have been faithful. Mm -hmm. You need to sit up in that chair. And with his heart breaking and grieving like crazy, he sits there as the king. Wow. And um, I swear, I haven't preached that yet. Yeah, but I hear a sermon. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming. You better not steal it. You know, first, I, I know that's what I'm saying. The credit. You're gonna say you preaching Dr. Genius to a sermon. I said, didn't you see me on tape? I'll say. <laughs> I'll say. And I was in a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> and I heard. Somewhere I heard. <laughs>